Welcome to the Mingo and Karen Show, the podcast. We're excited that you've chosen to explore the topic of life with us. All of us are here for a reason, so let's venture on this journey together. Today, I wanted to get a little bit deeper into something that, of course, y'all know we were having a discussion about this and just talking about um, feeling maybe sometimes a little bit trapped or stuck. So I was explaining to Mingo how I was feeling about, uh, you know, sometimes when you're in a place where you want to have more, be more, do more, but feeling that kind of stuck feeling. So the way that I described it is that I had a moment where I felt like, I feel like uh, I am a butterfly, but I'm in caterpillar mode. So I'm stuck in my cocoon, ready for, ready to come out, ready for my, you know, to spread my wings and do exactly what it is I believe I am destined to do in my life. Yeah, yeah. You know, when you start talking about being trapped and stuck, it's it's really two different things. Because, like, being trapped, sometimes you can feel like there's no way out. That's true. You know, I'm trapped. I don't know what to do. My back is against the wall. And being stuck, a lot of times you just need a helping hand. Mm-hmm. You know, you need somebody to help pull you out. But in your analogy of the, butterf- uh, the caterpillar and the butterfly, mm-hmm. That's I, I I remember when you told it to me. I was like, oh wow, that that you know when you really close your eyes and think about that, mm-hmm. you are a full formed butterfly, but you're still stuck inside the cocoon. Right. And you know it. Mm-hmm. Everybody else doesn't know it because they can't see inside the cocoon. Right. But I think it comes from where I am in this uh, journey of uh, many years. People who like know me know how much I love to write and do different things. But they also know that one of my uh, aspirations has always been to be, you know, some type of motivational speaker or to even do what we're doing now. This podcast is like a dream come true to me. Um, so, I but, agree. but something along that, the, the lines of that and, uh, just feeling like I, the way I kind of described it to Mingo was before I used to sit and dream about my destiny. Like, what does that look like for me? What does that feel like for me? And now I feel like I am the actual manifestation of my destiny. Yeah. So every waking moment, um, probably even for me, every sleeping moment, every moment of the day, the thing that I feel like I'm called to do is something that I really want to do. But you, you said something really powerful, but I don't even think you may have not realized what you just opened up. Mm-hmm. You and your destiny are one now. Yeah. You're not trying to get to it. Absolutely. You, you're it. Mm-hmm. You understand that you are the destiny. Right. And being that butterfly, you already know that your wings are beautiful. Mm-hmm. You know that you can fly. But all the other caterpillars think you a caterpillar <laughs> like them stuck yeah. in a cocoon. <laughs> right. They think y'all are alike. But you came to your, you know, place of where you needed to be before they did. Right. And, you know, and the hard thing about being trapped and being stuck is how do you get out of it? Mm-hmm. The first thing you have to do is get out of your own way. Yeah. You got to get out of your own way. And then once you make a decision that I'm going to get out of my own way and I need some help, I need some help, maybe not physically, but you maybe maybe just need help in your thinking. Well, but then, you know, another good point about that is sometimes you don't know that you're even stuck or you don't know that to a certain extent you're trapped because if you look at the the differences between being stuck and being trapped, stuck, you know, in my mind, I guess when I initially said it, I thought it was synonymous terms, but they really do have two different uh, directions that they can go in. Yeah. Um, now, the, the common denominator, though, is that you can free yourself from both, right? So you can get unstuck and you can get untrapped. Now, I don't know if those are words, y'all. Unless you're stuck in the past. You know, people still wear 80s clothes in the late (laughs) 2000s. Well, I don't know about that clothes, but, (laughs) but, you know, just joking. But anyway, seriously, though, you know, understanding that it's such a desire in me. I just cannot even put it into words. And I believe that's how I kind of came to the idea that I'm actually living the manifestation of that moment right now, that caterpillar moment where I have been in this place for many years um, where I've been trying to figure it out and trying to figure it out. Not that I have it all figured out. I'm not saying that at all, but really getting to a really good place within myself where I want to be who I've always seen. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not, it's not just some desire I sit and I dream about, or I think about, no, like we're, doing the podcast there's a physical manifestation of our thoughts 
And once that finally comes, because I mean, you do, you can get stuck and trapped into your own thoughts and you're, oh my gosh, you know, because you're, you're in this place where you're doing one thing, but your heart is, it wants you to do something different. The other side of town. Anybody <laughs> here with me? <laughs> yeah. But I mean, and that can, ha- I mean, if you really think about the simplicity of it, it can happen even in our minds, right? Yeah. It can happen even in our hearts and in our souls where we begin to feel unfulfilled um, when we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. And I know you uh, were saying to me the story about, and I, you know, if you want to share it about the story of when you get to heaven. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know. I just heard the story recently. Eh? Mm-hmm. Okay. I've been under a rock. Don't laugh at me, <laughs> but it was telling about the story when the person passed away mm-hmm. and when they got to heaven, they was walking down the hallway with this angel mm-hmm. and down this long hallway with all these doors, it had different names on them and, and all these different names. And so as we're walking down the hallway, one of the doors had this person's name on it. Mm-hmm. So the person asked the angel, well, what's in there? And the angel said, you don't want to know. Mm-hmm. And the person was very adamant. I don't want to go any further. I know we going to the pearly gates, but here's a door with my name on it. Mm-hmm. I want to go in there. Angel said, against my better judgment, I'm going to let you see what's in there. And the angel opened the door Mm -hmm. and the person saw all these beautiful gifts and just these different things and just just a manifestation of all the things that this person was looking for. Mm -hmm. And he said he asked the angel, well, what is this? He said, these are all the blessings God had for you on earth and that you never used, and you never used them. So that it hit me so hard. I thought. I would feel like I disappointed God Mm -hmm. if I didn't manifest what I needed to be here on earth Mm -hmm. because I don't want a closet up there with stuff in it. Yeah. I I don't want that. And then for people, you know, in fairness for people who may not, you know, be, say, religious people, let that be whatever you need it to be. If it's your universe or it's your whatever you want it to be, just getting to that place and just getting to that place in life where you realize you have not done everything that you had the opportunity to do that you left somehow left your gift behind or that you abandoned your gift or that you didn't pay attention to your gift or that you passed it on to somebody else to be able to, to do it and to live that. And, you know, you and I both just had, uh, um, you know, our 46th birthdays. Yay. And I do want to just side note, let me just share something with y'all that I Mingo doesn't even know I'm getting ready to share this. But on his forty sixth birthday, I had been um I had gone to, you know, get my regular mammogram. And they called me well, I got a letter in the mail, ironically, um, where they wanted me to uh come back for a diagnostic mammogram. And the only day that they had available was on as quickly as they wanted it done was on Mingo's birthday. So it was a really bittersweet day for me. And so the reason why I'm kind of going off, you know, on the side a little bit about this is because it was so intense. Yeah. That day was so intense. And to, for everything to come back where um, I'm good and yeah. I don't have, you know, any cancer in my body, like that was a blessing. So I just want to say even that has motivated me more to say, OK, I am here. I need to do more with what with my life my life I can't uh, yes I'm gonna stay in the, the, the cocoon as long as I need to be and what that means is being in a certain um being in a certain uh, uh, uh place where I'm learning yeah and I'm growing and I'm you know what you're absorbing. getting ready and being prepared yeah. for that moment that that is gonna come um you know i remember a lady told us when i was uh i think we were 22 at the time and this lady said to me she said you're gonna speak in front of millions i thought that lady was i'm like lady first of all i ain't got that personality i talked about people telling you you go be a painter (laughs) you ain't never want to be no painter (laughs) but what's ironic is that i didn't know that what what she saw in me was something i didn't even know was in me right whereas now I'm that caterpillar. Yes. I have grown. I understand and I know. I don't take my life for granted. I don't take this platform of this show for granted. I don't take you for granted, our kids, Mm. everything that we are given, I am grateful for on a daily basis. So my point is just that I wanted to share that story with you all about um, us, you know, me having to get that mammogram because 
um, it it really does point to an entire thought process. And you know, thinking back to that day, I mean, it was just a few days ago, but mm -hmm. the wait from the first exam to when they could actually do the more intense exam. Mm -hmm. That was the greatest birthday present ever. Mm -hmm. I was just so delighted that you were good. Yeah. I mean, birthday party celebration could have been over right yeah. now because that was just, that was a lot. Mm -hmm. It was a lot. And being a caterpillar, you understand that you are going through a growth stage. Yes. But in this case, we're talking about you are a butterfly. Mm. You are ready. You're ripe. You're primed. What you need to do, you already know how to do. You just need to be free. Yeah. So that big question comes in, how do I get unstuck? Mm -hmm. How do I get unstuck? We ask ourselves that all the time. How do I get unstuck? Mm -hmm. So you move out of the way. You You move out of the way and you let you and this universe come together and make it happen. Mm -hmm. And when I say come together, if you have that little fear in your stomach that says, I can't do this, you should absolutely do it. Absolutely. Well, unless it's a scary fear. Now, we're talking about just that thing, that reluctance that, you know, is, is in, and I agree with you completely. If it's, oh, my God, I'm kind of nervous to do yeah. it, then uh, I think it was, uh, you know, it was a book uh, that we read many years ago called Do It Afraid. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and you know, you, so that fear, you're absolutely right. This podcast was kind of one of those things for us. It's like, oh, my God, what if they don't like us? What if they don't like our it's talking like, style? Are they going to listen? Are they going to think we're funny? Then we got to that place of we were that butterfly in that cocoon and say, you know what? Let's let's do it. Yeah. Let, let's talk about it. Let's document it. Let's let's make this happen. And being unstuck, sometimes you have to have assistance in being unstuck. Mm -hmm. But you have to be okay with somebody telling you, well, hey, y'all, I mean, I know you guys want to do this. But, you know, you might want to tighten it up a little bit or I, something like that. I think you and I are good, pretty good at doing stuff like that. And I think for people who are stuck in um, in patterns or, you know, in, in relationships or in a career you don't want, find someone who you trust to tell you the truth. You absolutely need that because you you would tell yourself that you don't need to improve. Mm -hmm. People who love you may be scared to tell you the truth because they think they may hurt your feelings. Not everybody's not like that. Some yeah. people are just straight shooters. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, if you want the truth, I'm gonna give you the truth. And then if you don't like their reaction, they'll be like, well, you asked me for the truth. They yeah. put it back on you because that's not their problem. You mm. went to them to get the truth. So that becomes your ownership. You have to own that. Yeah. And sometimes it's hard to hear that you're stuck. You may you may be the most progressive person in your set of friends or set of people that's around you. So that lets you know if you're the most progressive one, but you know you go home at night and you stuck, you need a, a, a little bit group that challenges you mm -hmm. a little bit more. I'm not saying drop your friends, drop your family, drop your job, but I am saying if you are truly a butterfly in a cocoon, I'm talking about when you pull up to a place. Let's just use a job as an example. I lived this. I had a great job, mm -hmm. but just the thought of being in there just – tore me up from the inside out mm -hmm. wasn't that this wasn't a good company not that it didn't provide for my family not that this was a reputable company but who i am as a person as a butterfly i was trapped in a cocoon mm -hmm. and everybody who was on the outside i'm talking about people that were not caterpillars mm -hmm. and then the ones that were caterpillars they were okay with doing the same thing every day mm -hmm. for the kind of personality that i am i need to be free mm -hmm. i have to be free to express who I am, what I am, what I stand for. But I was stuck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was stuck in in the point of, you know, I have this responsibility and that responsibility. At some at some point, you have to say, this is important to me. Yeah. I have to do this. Mm -hmm. Um when you said that about, you know, about having people around you who you can trust to be honest with you. I think where most people just kind of drop the ball on their own life in this is in order to in order to to get out of the place you're in you've got to stretch yeah stretching is not easy stretching is is challenging it's 
it can be hard and it means that you have to do something you have not done before. Mm-hmm. It means that you have to be something that you haven't been before. And in order to do that, you got to think about things you've never thought of before. I tried that with yoga and I was still <laughs> hurt. I thought of other things. <laughs> Maybe it was your technique, yeah, husband. Hey, it was the muscles that didn't want to stretch. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. Well, that, that too. And so pull yourself out of your own comfort zone and ask yourself, is where I am today okay? Is it going to get me closer to my destiny? If it's not, then think about what, what step can you take? You don't, you don't have to take 10 steps at a time. You really can put one foot right in front of the other and do something different um, versus what you've always done. And that is the way that in your caterpillar moment, you could be thinking about it. You could be thinking about what do I need to do? Okay, I'm here for right now. What do I need to do that's going to get me to my next place? For me, everything that I have wanted, everything that I have set out to do as it pertains to the Mingo and Karen show and what we talked about, we wrote this down. Oh my gosh. How long ago? Years ago. We knew we wanted to do some type of something, right? And then podcasts became popular. So this was like a natural transition for us to do this. We were stuck in in the time it was taking to develop it. The way people were exposed to it has changed. Yes. You know, we went from wanting a TV show when mm-hmm. everybody was looking at TV to wanting to be on the radio mm-hmm. when everybody was on the radio. Then the Internet was popular. Mm-hmm. And then a satellite show. And mm-hmm. then podcasts hit. And it was just like a natural, natural fit. Yeah. Because it's like all of it. It can be all of it. You're in control of it. And that was those years of being stuck. We were doing and moving and talking about things and just exploring and saying, hey, we want to we want to try this. We want to do this. Because, see, one thing about Karen and I, if we talk about it and say we're going to do it, oh, we're going to do it. Now, now, I'm not saying it's going to necessarily work out every time we do it, but <laughs> but, we, but we are going to try. But you know what? And you, you made You brought up a great point that I really actually want to talk about that. We have had so many failures. I was just talking to a friend of mine about this yesterday. He's like a brother to me. We were talking about how when you get to a certain place, people only see the result of where you are. They don't see that the result of where you are is based on what you come from. Yeah. I believe that that growth moment, even if it's where you had some setbacks in order for you to live the most beautiful butterfly life, you got to sit in that caterpillar moment. And sometimes that caterpillar moment might be the, the most be at the most uh, inopportune unsuccessful times in your life that even along with stretching is what has made me grow I can remember things I mean I think about my old thought process and it's like sometimes when you're going through life you'll keep going around the same mountain over and over and over and over and over and over again right it's because your wings are not ready to break out of that caterpillar Yeah. I mean I'm sorry that cocoon you're not ready to break free and live a beautiful and free life because you're still growing. And when it's time for that destiny to be manifested, that's when you start to wiggle a little bit because it's getting too tight in the cocoon. It's game time. And it's time It's time to get it. Yep. Like how they talk about, the, you know, when mother birds are teaching their baby birds to fly Mm -hmm. and you know, they feed them, they feed them, they feed them, they feed them, you know, they go get the worm, they bring it back every day. Then that game time day come. Mm -hmm. Mama give them that worm, grab them by the neck and throw them out the nest. Yep. Those who have been training, you know, preparing, getting stronger, Mm -hmm. they will be able to fly before they hit the ground. Yes. And I think that's what happens. The beautiful thing about the caterpillar butterfly analogy, you're so beautiful when you come out of Mm there. I mean, you're, 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 you're your best self. Yeah. You have all the research you need to do. Mm-hmm. You have all the planning you need to do. Yes. You're ready. You're ready to present that this is who I am. Mm-hmm. This is who I want to be. Mm-hmm. Until you believe that and you know that, 
you're going to be in that cocoon. That's right. And wow. being in that cocoon, you can be in that cocoon one or two ways. You can be a caterpillar or you can be a butterfly. Mm-hmm. But the goal is to break out of the cocoon yep. and spread your wings. Mm-hmm. That's the ultimate goal. You know, the ultimate goal is to show your beauty. Mm-hmm. Show how beautiful you are. Think about how silent a butterfly is. Yeah. And it's just breathtaking. It is. When you see one, I remember uh, one time you, sh- you showed these houses. Mm-hmm. And it was in a rural area. And there was this, oh, yeah. there was this bush. This bush had at least a hundred butterflies. Stunning. In it. I have never seen nothing like that before in my yeah. life. Think about the magnitude of one butterfly, mm-hmm. but to see a hundred of them at one time. With different colors. Different colors and all of them moving with no sound. Yeah. Wow. That that's amazing to me. Mm-hmm. I want I want when I come out of my cocoon, which I am now, the Mingo and Karen show, we're mm-hmm. out here. Mm-hmm. We're we're living our best life. We're telling the truth. Mm-hmm. We're 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 telling about our experiences and most of all we're telling about how we did not succeed at certain things so you don't have to go through it. Yeah. We're not afraid of that. It's moving in silence. You right. know, from from looking from afar, it's like, oh, they're crazy. Mm-hmm. Or why, you know, why would they want to keep trying and trying and trying for this moment right here? Because yep. I knew I was a butterfly. Mm. And that, and that's just the way I believe. That's just the way I move. Yeah. And that freedom, it's, 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 it's odd that there is a, I think being on the other side of it, you don't realize that there is a peace that comes about when you know what you're supposed to do in your life. I heard so many people. There was this guy so many years on Oprah's show, and he was making like $350,000 a year. And his dream was to always uh, be a writer, but he was afraid to because, you know, he was making good money, even though he didn't really love his job. Um, And he just decided to take a leap of faith on himself. And he became the writer he always dreamed of being. And... When something is on the inside of you, doing it is so natural that it automatically feels like a part of you. I feel like for people who we are so grateful for, they take out time to listen to us. And we're having conversations. That's it. We're sharing our life stories. We're trying to enlighten people and give as much insight into things that we've experienced and learned and grown from it's almost like i mean kind of you think about it's funny huh for me because i come from a family full of educators like everybody in my family is a school teacher principal whatever they've all been in education of course me thank y'all very much i didn't want to be a school teacher that just was not something i saw myself doing being in a classroom with somebody children child Mm -mm. but instead i actually even though it's something I've always resisted, teaching lessons and talking to people is something that comes naturally to me. Yeah, it was naturally in you just to come out in a different way because you're your own butterfly. Absolutely. You're your own butterfly. You have your own set of colors. Your wing looks its own way, mm-hmm. and you're going to provide to the world in a way you need to. Your family, it is a lot of educators. Mm-hmm. So they, they've laid that great, you know, that, that ground-level foundation. Yes. And without that, it can be a young lady like you yes or a young man like me or some other young lady young man you have to have that foundation so if you put it in our formula of the caterpillar to the butterfly Mm -hmm. while you were in that cocoon that was your learning that was your foundational stage Mm -hmm. you was learning what you wanted to be how to do it how to communicate then when you changed into the butterfly now it's ta-da time to come out and show the world (laughs) here it is this hey this is me you accept me or you don't, but one thing that's not going to change, I am not going to stop being a butterfly because you want to be a caterpillar. Yeah, absolutely. And, I've, you know, it's it's just important to know what stage you're in. Yeah. And if you're okay with caterpillar life, then I'm not here to tell you you shouldn't Perfectly be. Perfectly fine. Yeah. But if you want to live a more fulfilled life, you know, when, when uh, I, he, I used to hear people all the time say, you know, um, do something you love and never work a day in your life. It's like, oh, yeah, you just saying it. Like, I don't know about all the of that. The problem is they never tell you how not to work a day in your life. Right. <laughs> and they're telling you from the day of life they working. <laughs> yeah, they working their jobs. <laughs> but, um, and, and I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Some people are meant to be, I mean, I heard this this uh, this speaker, um, 
and she works uh, for a large corporation and she does like their equity and belonging. She did like this, uh, this conference, um, uh, this teleconference. Let me tell you something. She was so powerful. The organization she works with, they are blessed to have her. I mean, when I say fortunate, they're fortunate. So we're not trying to say like be dreamers like oh, us no, no. at all, you know, but the point is no matter where you are, no matter in what you're doing, be the best at it. Be the best at it, and don't be afraid to spread your wings. Yep, yep. Don't be afraid to come out of your caterpillar, uh, out of your cocoon, and say, you know what, my caterpillar moment was so awesome that this butterfly moment is about to be epic. It went from a hundred legs to two wings. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And but to being to, I mean, think about it. Butterflies are colorful. Yeah. They're vibrant. They're like you said, they're like a quiet storm. They come in and you like, oh, like they just appear and they're beautiful. You have that same beauty yep. on the inside. Grow it to be whatever it is that you need for it to be. Become the person you've always wanted to be, doing the things you've always wanted to do, and be that butterfly. You can go from a caterpillar to a butterfly. Happy relationship building. Happy relationship building. Thank you for listening to our podcast. You can find us on Facebook, on our Love is Powerful Stuff page, and at Mingo and Karen on Twitter and Instagram. Happy relationship building.